Pterodactylus antiquus was the first pterosaur ever discovered, and the term pterodactyl has become popularly associated with the entire group in modern culture. The first pterodactylus specimen was found in southeastern Germany and was described, but not named, in 1780. Since the concept of extinction was not yet understood, fossils of unfamiliar species were often thought to represent creatures still living in remote parts of the world. Initially, it wasn't clear what kind of animal this fossil represented, and it was believed to be aquatic, as the ocean seemed like a likely hiding place for such a strange creature. By 1800, it was identified as a flying animal, and naturalist Johann Hermann created the first known reconstruction of a pterosaur, which also stands as one of the earliest examples of paleo art. He envisioned it as a bat-like mammal, giving it large wing membranes, external ears, and fur. His first drawing showed an unusual rounded wing structure with a stiff hoop formed by the wing finger around the ankles, while his second sketch improved on this, depicting a more accurate straightened wing finger and a large membrane between the neck and wrist, much like a colugo. Considering the limited information at the time, this reconstruction was remarkably accurate, despite the erroneous assumption that it was a mammal and the absence of soft tissue evidence. The name Pterodactylus was formally given to this species in 1810. While it was recognized by some early paleontologists as a flying reptile, others still thought it was more akin to mammals or birds. In the pre-Darwinian era, the idea of evolutionary relationships didn't exist, and pterosaurs were viewed as a type of bat, thought to bridge the gap between mammals and birds in the chain of being. This bat model strongly influenced early pterosaur studies, and many scientists continued to depict them with mammalian features into the 1840. The notion of pterodactylus being aquatic also persisted until around 1830, with some illustrations showing its wings as large flippers similar to a penguin's. By the mid-19th century, the reptilian nature of pterosaurs was accepted, but the idea that they resembled bats persisted. They were assumed to be covered in fur, warm-blooded, and clumsy quadrupeds on land. A specimen of Scaphognathus found in 1830 even showed hair-like fuzz, although this was debated until it was definitively confirmed almost 200 years later. British paleontologist Richard Owen rejected the bat-like view of pterosaurs, portraying them as cold-blooded, sluggish, and scaly gliders. His influence led to the creation of the Crystal Palace Pterodactylus statues in the 1850s, which depicted the animal with heavy scales and a goose-like appearance. These statues were among the earliest public representations of pterosaurs and shaped public perception for years. Even into the 20th century, some scientists continued to argue that pterosaurs were active and warm-blooded. The first popular book on the group in 1901 suggested they were closely related to birds. German paleontologists supported this idea into the 1930 years, while their British and American counterparts largely lost interest in pterosaurs. During this time, they were depicted as evolutionary dead ends, barely capable of flight, shown either naked or scaly, hanging upside down like wrinkled bats. In the 70s, the discovery of pycnofibers, hair-like structures, on swords helped spark a renaissance in the study of pterosaurs. They were reinterpreted as warm-blooded, active creatures more similar to birds. However, some reconstructions swung too far in this direction, depicting them as overly bird-like, with upright bipedal postures and thin wing membranes attached at the waist. Later studies on biomechanics, soft tissue remains, and trackways showed that some aspects of the earlier bat model were correct. Pterosaurs had flight membranes that attached to their hind limbs and walked on all fours. However, instead of being clumsy like bats, they were agile walkers and runners with an efficient upright stance. We now know Pterodactylus lived during the late Jurassic, about 150 to 148 million years ago, in a region of southern Germany that was an island archipelago in a shallow tropical sea. Fragmentary remains have also been found elsewhere in Europe and Africa, suggesting the genus had a wide range. This pterosaur was relatively small, with the largest adults having a wingspan of around 1 meter it had long, straight jaws lined with numerous pointed teeth. Most known specimens are juveniles, but larger adult fossils show evidence of a soft tissue crest with a backward-pointing lappet and long, mane-like pycnofibers on the neck. Like other pterosaurs, it was warm-blooded and covered in fuzz, with hollow bird-like bones and air sacs to lighten its body. 
Its wings were highly specialized, with layers of fibers and muscles allowing precise control over the shape of the flight surfaces. On the ground, it could fold its wings neatly, keeping the membranes clear of its limbs. Pterodactylus was likely a generalist carnivore, feeding on small prey such as invertebrates, and its eye structure suggests it was primarily active during the day, 